Hello, your majesties. Happy day six of Prince Smith. Are you guys loving it so far? I have another story time for you guys. And tomorrow you guys will get a story time and I will elaborate more on about why I changed my name. Even though I already told you, I kind of just want to like really drill it in. So this story I'm about to tell you guys, it's called Christmas tree decorations. Okay, so Christmas tree decorations is a spooky story about a girl who is home alone on Christmas Eve and has a nasty encounter with a man claiming to be Santa Claus. Yeah, I've been there before. Not, not, but it wasn't with Santa Claus though. It was with someone like trying to pretend they were they were a celebrity, um, but in you. Okay. Um, it was Christmas Eve and an 11 year old French girl named Juliette was decorating the Christmas tree. Her mother was, wor her mother was working as a nurse at a local hospital and the two of them lived alone in the small apartment of suburbs, oh, in the suburbs of Paris. Late that evening, Juliet's mother called to say she would she would not be home until late that night. Oh, Juliet continued to decorate the tree with all of the lovely things her mother had bought at the shop. She draped some multicolored Christmas lights around the tree and hung beautiful ornaments on the branches. After placing the angel on top of the Christmas tree, she finally finished decorating and sat down to relax and watch TV. Even though she was all alone in the sixth floor apartment, Julia felt safe as she gazed out across the lights of Parisian skyline from her window. She could see the Eiffel Tower and the Champs to spin. Oh, wait, wait, no. She could see the Eiffel Tower and the Champened Mars. Most of the other tenants in the building had gone home to spend Christmas Eve with their relatives in the countryside. The apartment building was almost deserted. Hmm. Um, Julia was growing bored, waiting for her mother to return. Suddenly, she thought she heard a scratching noise at the front door. She turned down the television and listened carefully. There was an eerie silence. Um, curious, she slowly approached the door and looked through the peephole. To her surprise, she saw a man standing outside dressed in a red suit with fluffy white trim. Um, yeah, He was large and fat with a dirty gray beard and wore a red hat on his head. He knocked on the door loudly. Nervously and concerned, she asked through the door, Who's there? It's Santa Claus, the man replied. Let me in. I'm cold. I'm cold and I'm tired and I'm hungry. At, at this, a chill went down Juliet's spine. She was no dummy. She knew that whoever this creepy man was, he wasn't Santa Claus. Good girl, Juliet. Good girl. <laughs> um, okay. My mother isn't home right now, she said, her voice shaking. Please leave. Peering through the peephole, Juliet watched as the man's eyes filled with anger and his face twisted into agreements of hate. He began knocking on the door even louder, oh, even harder, and rattling the doorknob. It's Santa Claus, Juliet, he growled. 
Have you laid out some milk and cookies for me, Julia? You know how much Santa loves his milk and cookies. The young girl had a sinking feeling in the pit of her stomach. How did he know her name? Pause. Um, usually, like, when someone asks Santa Claus that, like, how do you know my name? Oh, I know everybody's names around the world, all the kids' names around the world. Like, it's cute, but again, you know, it, it, it's cute, but I guess it depends on how he, you know, like, oh, Santa knows everyone's name. Like, no. <laughs> but anyway, okay, back to the story. Um, the man, then the man began kicking and pounding at the door. She peeked out again and saw him reach into his coat pocket and pull out a switchblade. He shoved the knife into the keyhole and tried to pry it open. Juliet was terrified. She didn't know what to do. If you don't go away, I'll call I'll, I'll call the police, she, she shouted. All of a sudden, the knocking stopped. Julia stood perfectly still, afraid to move. Minute passed as she started to think that the man might have been scared away by her threat. She slowly approached the door and looked through the peephole to see if the man was really gone. The hallway seemed to be empty. Suddenly, she saw the man running down the hallway with an ax in his hand. Julia screamed. Oh, Julia screamed and ran to the closet in a panic. She crouched down and hid behind the coats as tears fright rolled down her cheeks. She heard the boom, boom, boom as the man tried to smash down her front door. There was, there was a mighty crack as the door gave way. Uh, wait, there was a mighty crack as the door gave way and the man came crashing through the splintered wood. Oh, Lordy. Um, okay. Laughing to himself, he called out, Juliet, my pretty, where are you, Juliet? Don't be afraid. We'll have ourselves some fun tonight. Where are you hiding? Seriously. Um, the crazed intruder walked around the house searching for the frightened girl. Juliet curled up in the closet, trembling with fear. She dreaded to think what he planned to do to her. Um, suddenly, the handle of the closet moved up and down. Then the door began shaking and she heard the man's voice laughing. Juliet, I know you're in there, he said. Open up for Santa, open, open up before I open you up. Oh, uh-oh. The man swung his ax and it struck the closet door with a huge bang, tearing into the flimsy wood. Juliet screamed and began crying bitterly. She grabbed a wire coat hanger and twisted it into a point. She waited her she she waited her eyes open wide and her hands were trembling. Oh my god, the hanger part reminds me of Lori Strode and Halloween. Remember you guys remember that? Okay. There was another loud crash and the closet doors gave way and the closet doors gave way in a hail of splinters. The horrible man tore the doors off their hinges and thrust his head in between the coats. He was laughing and drooling like a madman as his huge gnarled hands grabbed, grabbed at the horrified girl. Julia held, Julia held up the pointed end of the coat hanger and bravely thrust it into, his face, into the man's face. He went straight ill. It went straight into his eye. He recoiled in pain, screaming with rage as blood 
flowed down his cheek. He ripped the wire out of his eye socket and grabbed Juliet by the hair. Then he dragged her kicking and screaming out of the closet. Oh, Lordy. Okay. Um, tonight, you will be privileged, my lovely Juliet. I've got a list and I've checked it twice. I'm here to decide if you've been naughty or nice. You can scream and scream and beg for your life, but naughty girls get the ax and the nice girls get the knife. Uh, how about no? <laughs> anyway, um, it was after midnight when Juliet's mother returned home. She saw the front door hacked to pieces and rushed inside to look for her daughter. Gazing around at the carnage, her eyes struggled to take it all in. Then she began screaming in absolute horror. The Christmas tree was decorated with Juliet's entrails and her severed head was perched at the top. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, this is a very scary story. I heard Brittany Crabb do a video on this. Um, what do you guys think of this scary story? Um, let me know if you guys liked it or if you guys heard of it. And before I go, I want to give a huge shout out to one of my best friends, Amy Dwilly. She gave me this Michael Myers beanie for um, Christmas last year. So I'm wearing it today. So, hash, uh, so shout out to you, Bessie. And I love you guys so much. So if you're new here, hi, I'm Princess Peyton. Hit the red button to become your majesty and hit the bell notification so you're notified every time I upload a video. And I love you guys so much. You guys are the best human beings ever made. And you're the king of my heart in the song lyrics of Taylor Swift. And I will see you guys for day seven of Prince Miss. So I love you guys so much. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Okay, love you. Bye. Mwah.